so timeline as uh Bill Bastable said that oh told me that in April, late May, spring or early May uh summer of 82 he got to the split screen for the first time as far as he can re recall and uh, he believes his score was if it was the video I mean he's recorded on this thing is as as 3 million 200 and something thousand maybe 300 230 something thousand he believes is what it may have been and then by September he uh, was able to get all the way to the end because there obviously there was some grouping there because you know he said he got was per, getting pretty good at grouping getting all the ghosts and stuff and then uh, three points uh, I'm sorry in September 6 1982 then he got his three 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 two eight twenty and then he said his highest score was November 5th 1982 which was th um, 30 points more he had three dots going on the right side of the screen it was a three 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 two eight fifty. So and then finding out that months later Randy Tufts had accomplished or gotten to the end a perfect eat. Uh and then you said that he got there basically he had died twice on the way. Yes. And that achieved was uh, believed to be February of nineteen eighty three with a score of three million three three two eight ninety. Correct. Okay. And as far as you know, that was his highest score that he that he ever achieved. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, ever received, yes. Okay. And then of course you were still uh playing with him at the what was the name of the arcade? The Lounge. The Lounge? Yeah. And that was it was that Hamilton, Ontario? Yes. In Hamilton, Ontario. Let me write that down. And that was in uh, you were playing him and then in April or May or let's put this some uh, sometime in the spring of nineteen ninety one. You actually yeah. beat him, and he actually witnessed this game that you played, uh, three million yes. three 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 uh, fifty oh five oh. Yes. In which, in which at that time you said you knew about eight of the dots on the right side of the screen. Yes. Okay. So before 1999, as far as all the evidence that we have, you were probably, I mean, from the 80s up until 99 unless this Jose Gonzalez can be verified that you had uh, the highest uh, Pac-Man score of 3,333050. Right. As far as we know, right? Yes. Okay. okay, so eight dots. Now, when you played that game, let me see, uh, you would have had to have eaten, did you, uh, do you remember how you, how your men went when you got them? Did you get eight dots for the first few men, or this was on a three plus one, right? Oh my god! Okay, so yeah, I got there on my first man. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Um, and like I knew there was dots that regenerated on the right side, mm -hmm. and I just didn't know exactly how many of them, right? Yeah. So like, yeah, on, on each man, like I was like exploring like as much of the right side as I possibly could. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying like on all four men, I got eight dots. Like, cause I obviously like I would have had a higher score than that. Yeah. But I do remember specifically on one of those four men, I did get eight dots. Oh, nice. Cool, cool. And that, uh, of course that brings a, I think I mentioned to you the Jose Gonzalez thing. Uh, I posted a video on my uh, Facebook page where it shows me playing the split screen on main. And I think it began at like a score of 12,600, you know, because I cleared the previous board. And then the number of points that I got using five plus one, which it was a six men. Yeah. And basically clearing the left side or uh, through various men and then getting so many dots based upon the idea that I'm, I'm trying to get dots that I can see. And yeah. then, or basically, if I got dots uh, on the right side, trying to avoid ghosts, that's a that's a bonus, let's say. But at the very end of my game, if you add up the points, and then you were to assume add it to three million three two six six hundred, the score would have been three million three 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 one eighty. I think I talked to you about this before. Oh. So it is possible if the if the uh, the score, I'm sorry, the min was set to five plus one, it is possible for someone to get a three million three 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 one eighty. Which, uh, 
I don't even know how you would do that. If that was if that is the case for Jose Gonzalez, then how would you even categorize that? Because it's not a three plus one. You could say it's the highest Pac-Man score uh, in the 80s uh, on a five plus one setting. I mean, I mean, you couldn't say you couldn't say it was perfect if that was the case because he would have uh, died at. I mean. Either getting to the split screen or get, or dying before he finishes it, the dots on the right side. All right, but you had said that. that yeah, had, because yeah, if you had taken my three three zero fifteen and you added on two more men, I would have had higher than his one eighty. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, I mean, well, I think we we both agree that if it was done on a three plus one, then it had to be a perfect game. But that's just an assumption. Right. And I was talking to Bill Basketball, and I said it seems kind of, it seems kind of odd and less prob- probable uh, for a 16-year-old at 1981 to have gotten that score uh, as far as any kind of thing. So I would assume, and this is just an assumption until evidence comes out, that this had to be something not in 81, but probably probably a year or two later, 82 or 83. I don't know. I mean. I, I said that's more probable that would have happened because Bill Bastable and Randy Tubbs has already basically achieved the maximum points to the split screen. So, I mean, does that sound reasonable? Cool. Yeah, I mean, it's – and uh, and like you said, no, the, none of this stuff that we're talking about, I mean, your rivalry with Randy Tubbs and your competition uh, certainly can't be used to say, all right, these are the high scores because there was no evidence for it. Cool. I mean. Cool. I'm not doubting you did it, and Randy witnessed your game, and you watched him play. So very cool. And there's evidence. What's that? Right. So yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. Like, I don't have a problem with that. And the same thing with Jose. I mean, people if people are making a big deal about this just because they want to quote take Billy Mitchell down, I mean, it won't take him down. It, it, oh, it, no. it can't be used as proof. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> It's like they're just grasping at straws. Like it's just so funny. Like, just, like, and then, well, Bill, why are you so desperate? Like, <laughs> just like it's like you're making your motivation so obvious. Yeah. Like, just, yeah. Like, but uh, Bill Basketball, I asked him about that Midway letter, you know, and I said this one referred. I told him about the guy in Milwaukee. He had a three million one hundred eighty-three thousand on May eighth, nineteen eighty-two. It was recorded in one of these um, uh, archived newspapers. Uh, I think it was Sheboygan, Wisconsin, or something like that. Uh, and I said, it, and it mentioned that there was a guy from uh, Buffalo State College, and a computer science, that had gotten near close to three million points. And he said that he had been notified by the manufacturer that they know they don't accept uh, or keep records of high scores. And I said that sounds similar to what Midway told Bill Bastable. And I'm thinking, is it possible that this may have been the other person they referenced in their letter? Because, you know, the same kind of language was used. We don't, we don't recognize high scores. And then Bill Bastable said, well, uh, I would like to think that it's, it's uh, Jose Gonzalez. And of course, he used a different name. He got it mixed up with Carlos or whatever. But, and uh, but I think that's just because of what he's been told by Dwayne. I mean, there's no evidence of who this guy is. I mean, it's. I said I'm thinking it's probable and possibly more probable that it could have been someone else who had ar- had already contacted Midway. Otherwise, they wouldn't have even known about it. I mean, that I mean that sounds reasonable to me. I'm, I can't say that it was this guy. Uh, his name was what? Oh, Mitch Clapper was his name from uh, Wisconsin. But see, I mean, and as far as the timeline, you know, of May 8th, 1982, and I said, well, this is around the same time that Bill Bastable, he said late spring or early summer, where he got to the first, his first time he got to the split screen. So I'm assuming this Mitch Clapper, or this, uh, yeah, Mitch Clapper uh, didn't get to the split screen because it wasn't mentioned in the article. He may have been just short of it. Okay. All righty. So that sounds good. Cool, cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.